of the two lads. How did you get started in chefing? Chris, did you always want to be a chef? Uh, probably, yeah. I failed and did more than set out to be a chef, but I've been a chef now for 24 years, so... And did you do the whole Killy Beggs thing, and, or did you study Killy somewhere Killy Beggs, uh, in a skill. I right. did my official training in, in a skill, right. through the hotel, the hotel put me through college. Okay, and what, about, what about you, you Sebastian? I sp spent almost my last 15 years in the kitchen at home and in the private uh, restaurant. Where about, where about are you from? I'm from Poland. From Poland. So you would have spent time in a kitchen in Poland? Yes. And how long are you living in Ireland? In Ireland, 13 years. 13 years. And you've been with the Clayton Hotel now? The last 12 years. Very good. Excellent stuff. And, and was it always something that you were interested in? Uh, usually just cooking. Okay. And I presume that you guys didn't just fall into your jobs. You worked your way up the ranks. and. I started washing the dishes. Started washing? In the Sligo Park. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I was head chef now five years. Wow, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And what about you? Were you were you a sh you were a chef when you came to Ireland? Yes, I was. Yeah. Right, and did you start off again washing dishes and? No, no, I st started uh, like the commie chef in the Clayton Hotel, and then step by step. You worked your way up. And now I'm the senior sous chef. Okay, okay, all right then. Um, I'm going to throw some questions at you. Now, some of these questions I suspect you may or not, may not be able to answer because some of these questions could be more related to the, um, the management of the hotel or the wedding coordinator. So, I mean, if you don't have an answer or if you don't know the answer, that's fine as well. Um, but I'm going to throw a few of them at you anyway. Um, one of the questions I had is, do you guys get to speak to the couples before the wedding? I normally meet the couple. We, we normally have a wedding tasting night. Okay. For the couples, right? Okay, that's one of my questions. But yeah. I come, but go, so you do meet them? Well, we do, yeah. 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 What about you? you, you we have uh, always before the wedding, uh, wedding testing as well, and sometimes we coming to the guests to and we talking about it. Okay, let's yeah. let's talk about the wedding tasting. So hmm. right, um, who's involved? How many can they bring? Do they get the f or tidbits or? bite size samples or do they have do they give you an idea what they're thinking of beforehand uh, well normally it, it varies because we have a lot of wedding open days now as right. such um and they arrive and we have maybe small tasters of what we have to offer at the wedding open days um and then when they arrive they nearly know what they want so they maybe pick two three four things off the menu and have that and again, what about what about yourself, Sebastian? Is that how many people do they bring to the tastings? Uh, usually, if they don't, sorry, if, if if they don't go to a wedding taste, let's say an open day where the hotel sets up the room and they show off the bedrooms and they show off the ballroom and they do the tastings, etc. If they don't do one of them, how many people do they normally bring? Is it just a couple, or do they bring half uh, the family? Co usually, coming uh, couple, but. Sometimes they coming with the family as well. Right. Uh, it's together for the wedding testing, four or six people. How many main courses, in, in, as in what usually, the, the, is it two, is it three, uh, four? It's, it's normally about four. Four to choose from. Four. That two. Would, they whittle down to two, is it? Yeah. So on the day... Yeah, that, that, that have it whittled down from the large selection down to maybe four to five that they want to taste. Right. And then they pick the two that they... Normally, normally it's... It's beef or salmon, or turkey and ham, or beef, mm. or turkey and ham, or salmon. Mm. Would I be correct in saying those are the top three? Well, beef's definitely the top one. Beef. Some form of beef. It's right. either the beef fillet or the sirloin of beef, in our case. So that, that's the, the, the thicker steak size beef or the, the sliced? The sirloin of beef is the sliced beef. Yeah. And uh, we, it was, we call it the medallion's beef. It's actually beef fillet. It's four... Right. It was two four ounce medallions, and um, it's like a fillet steak, and it's cut in half. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And in relation to the so your beef, turkey and ham, and salmon, would that be or would it be beef, salmon, turkey and ham? I find nine times out of ten when they go with a beef dish, they'll go with a fish dish. Right. Because they have to cater for all. And other than salmon, what else could they possibly choose from? Can they have anything, or what's popular? Salmon, cod, hake, sea bass, 
I've seen, I've tasted sea bass at a wedding. I haven't tasted any of the others. No, we, we do cod quite a bit. What about, what about duck? Is duck popular? Just uh, sometimes, just one time per year maybe yeah. they take. And what about something really unusual then, like veal or something? Uh, or Not as much. Not as, much. as I find with wedding couples, and I try to explain them when I meet them from doing weddings down through the years, you have to realise it's just not yourself you're feeding. Yeah. Like, I love duck. It's, it's not everybody's cup of tea. Right, yeah. You have to realise that there's going to be people from different generations. You have to take all sides with you when you're, right. when you're feeding, especially big numbers, 200, 250. You have to cater for everybody. You know? Speak, speaking of, of, of numbers, is it, is it easier or more difficult to cater for large numbers or smaller numbers? Or does it matter? I think it's still a job the same. If you have to do a little bit more, that's the same job. And there's no proportionally. There's not as there's there's in proportion to in proportion to the numbers. Let's say ninety people to two hundred and fifty people. Proportionally, there's not an awful lot more work involved in relation to uh, the prep and stuff. It's just the quantity of food that you're organising. It's just quantity. Yeah. It's quantity. Okay. You have to take just a series. For, uh, fifty people is two hundred and fifty people. Right, it's okay. Just you're only dealing okay. quantities. Okay. <laughs> What about what about people who um, would have um, dietary requirements? Does that come into play when people are choosing a menu? What do you recommend? It, it comes into play. They ask us, you know, can you cater for vegetarians? Can you cater for celiacs? Can you cater for lactose? You no, know, there's that many different things now. Everybody's celiac. Allergic, everybody's allergic to something. Something. These days. But, um, but they're we're, they're all well able to be catered for on the day, as right. just once are made known. But do you you do you prefer to be told in advance? Ah, uh, well, if you'd fi if you'd fifteen or twenty vegans come and you'd want to know, yeah. you'd want we, to have we, something. It's better to know before. But yeah. always we are ready for vegans, dairy free or gluten free people, celiacs. Talk to me about a typical day or a typical wedding of two hundred and fifty people. What's the prep like? What's What's involved in, in your day? Uh, usually we prep everything in the same day. And bringing from starters to, to desserts. And so you'd, you'd start preparing the food at what, 10, 8, 8 9, 10 in the morning? Uh, usually 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the morning. Right. And you, 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 what, what, time, what time, how long does it take to cook a side of beef? Beef uh, depends if it's sirloin beef is about four hours, five hours. So, and this is a question that comes into play a lot, especially from, from the video guy's point of view and from Richard, um, Richard, uh, Richard with testament to this as well, that... How important is it for the couple, and this is very important, I think, for, from a couple's point of view, how important is it from a couple that they go through the timeline with both their wedding coordinator and their photographer that they land at the hotel at a certain time mm. to be ready mm. to be calling for the meal at a certain time? And if they, how important is that? It's, it's, it's very important. Any couples I talk to, and couples do ask your advice because they know that they, they get married once. Like I've seen hundreds of weddings. Did ask when's the best time to have speeches there, say. You brought it up before or after the meal. Are you before or after the meal, man? After the meal. After the meal? After the meal. After the meal. After the meal. I'm after the meal. Richard? Yeah. After the meal? After the meal. After the meal. It's, again, it's up to them. Of it's, course, it's because their pe day. people to be nervous. Exactly. So I said, I said, I recommend to couples, preferably after, mm. then if you have to, do it before. What do you say to couples who want to do it but after usually, the starter? Usually it's after the starter. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a good idea or a bad idea? It's an idea. Yeah. Um, uh, listen. And, and what, are, what are the implications for the food? Well, it just means you have to correct your timings. It's, uh, uh, food is all about timing. Like, we, we don't reheat food yeah. for a wedding. We, it's cooked on the day. It's rested. It's carved, say, the beef. Yeah. Like, Salmon is cooked when we get the order. Fish, you know, all fish cooked when we get the order. It's all down to timing then. But if they tell you, a couple could say the speeches are going to be 30 minutes. Turns out they're 10 minutes. 
So you have 20 minutes of a gap there. So it's all down to timing. It's all about coordinating then with front of house. What do you do in that situation? Well, that's, that's where you coordinate with your front of house. Right. It's very important. The front of house man has to be able to say, Chris, the best man is up now, so five minutes, we could be good to go. Right, that's okay. when we kick in the gear then. Right, okay. And and before the wedding then, when you're talking to the couples and they say, well, we want to do the speeches um, after the starter, mm. and they say, they'll be only 30 minutes mm. max. Do you say to them then, look, 30 minutes max, that's fine. Once we know in advance, we'll, we'll, we'll work around your schedule. But if your speeches go on for an hour and 15 minutes, mm. what happens in that situation? You, Do you start? What happens in a, you know? You can only advise them. Right. At the end of the day, it's their wedding. It's not my wedding. Yeah. You won't but you for the best for them, I'd advise them what to do but at the end of the day it's completely up to them you just have to again it's down to time it's down to judging it if you have it in the oven it's down to correcting your oven right. correcting the temperature holding it at the optimum temperature that it's not overcooking it's not yeah. going dry it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a balancing act it's balancing it basically down to Does, is it frustrating for you guys? Well, it is. <laughs> <laughs> not going to lie <laughs> no no I don't want you to lie yeah, because I uh, mean the couples that are watching um and, and, and not only the couples that are watching live, but remember this, this will go up on YouTube mm. afterwards as well. So you, it'll be there mm. um, to watch, yeah. you know, forever, basically. Um, so it is important that if, if you are going to your timeline with your hotel, with your photographer, you know, it, it, there's a reason for it. There's a reason. Yeah. And what I say to couples is... If you set your, if you organise with your hotel that you're ringing the, 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 the dinner bell um, at five on the day, no matter what time you arrive at, if you arrive at five to five, do not change the ringing of the bell because it affects, not so much that I care about, it'll affect the food, but it'll affect the time later on. But it, secondary to food, from my point mm. of view, um, it will affect the food, won't mm. it? It does. It does affect. If, if the hotel turn around, if the, the bride and groom land at five o'clock and say, "Is there any chance you can hold off ringing the bell till 6? Mm. It has happened. Yeah. There's, to be know, a match on telly, especially yeah, now yeah, qualifiers yeah, are on. And stuff. Yeah. It had. It happens. It happens, mm. and there's nothing you can do. You it can. Does. You can try your best to yeah. turn down the oven, try and keep things. Yeah. Um, moist and, mm. and, and fresh rather than have them dry out etc yeah. so am I correct in saying that when, when, when the girls are taking the orders for the beef or the fish it's because of the fish it's really the fish they're looking for because like you said you put the fish the fish, the fish on um, you, you cook the fish as, as per order I wouldn't cook the fish till after the soup goes right wow because it depends on size of the wedding 200 people it's going to take 25 minutes from to take the soup fish is cooked in 15 Usually between the soup and, for example, the starter soup and main course is about 25 minutes, 30 minutes. And we know exactly when we have to put in the fish into the oven. How, how many people do you have working with you in the kitchen? Is, there, is it mad when, when you know, you're in full swing? and It's a bit chaotic. Already. It's, it's organised <laughs> chaos. It's organised chaos, yeah. Uh, do you enjoy it? Love it. You love it? Yeah. And do you guys go out? I've seen some chefs at certain hotels where they go out to the couple hmm. and they either share a drink or they just go out and say hello to make sure everything is to their satisfaction and, and even just to wish them well. Did you guys do that sometimes? or At the wedding tastings, sometimes I go out, you know, I'd be out talking to them, I walk yeah. through the menu, just make sure they're 100% happy with the menu. And not just it happens in the hotel, the walkway into the, the ballroom. Passes the kitchen door. Right. So I'd be keeping an eye out and go out and just shake hands and tell them Wish the soup is well. burnt. And, yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, just to break that. Just make them feel that wee bit at ease because they have enough to worry about. I think know. it's a nice touch. I've yeah. seen it done in a couple of hotels yeah. on, on a, a number of different occasions where the chef comes out and he, he either, like I said, either does a toast mm. or he just wishes them well mm. and just checks with them. Mm. Is everything all right? Mm. Can, the, can the top table <laughs> have something different? Um, on the menu compared to the the guests, or is that really? No, they have usually everything the same. Yeah, mm -hmm. there was a there was a trend for a while where you could get steak and the rest of them be eating beef, it, you know, or something. They can. They can. They can. Yeah. They can but it's rare. It's yeah. just, 
The steak is rare or it's rare? Both. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way to eat steak. <laughs> the only way to well, I, I go medium. It's probably rare, all right. Um, and in relation, in relation to, let's say, the, 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 the overall course, the overall menu then, is, is it, does, the, does the soup course relate to the main course, uh, relate to the starter, or are they a standard starter? Can people have anything? Can they have bananas and apples for their starter or what? You can mix and match. The, they do whatever yeah. they want. It's their wedding. I like to think it's their wedding. Yeah. But if, it's your kitchen, though. If it makes them happy. <laughs> If it makes him happy, at the end of the day, they're the paying customer. Yes. And it's their day. Yes. If he wants, if he wants to have sherry trifle for a starter, he can have it. <laughs> Doesn't bother me. You heard it there. If you want sherry trifle for a starter, it's like a Just one person. We'll accommodate you. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Um, and let me just ask, are the, the, the ingredients for your food then, are they sourced locally or the... Are local, some yeah. Local, yeah. Local. Yeah. It'd be the same yeah. in the, the Clayton Hotel, yeah. And it's nothing is frozen, everything is fresh. Yeah. Fish, right. meat, everything is fresh. But you don't have a lad out the back peeling two hundred people's potatoes on a Saturday morning or anything like that. No, 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 no. They they come no. in the, the We, we did have not so long ago. Yeah. Yeah. Up until about I'd say ten or fifteen years ago we were doing it. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Some fell out the back peeling yeah. five, six hundred, eight hundred eight hundred spuds like spuds, carrots, everything. <laughs> It's got a lot easier now. <laughs> the chefs are having a picnic, really. What, what, what advice would you give the couples beforehand when choosing a menu? What, what, what advice do you give a couple now at one of the open days? It's, again, it's like I said earlier, it's to balance the menu and realise that it's just not yourself that you're feeding. Right. Like you might love, as I say, I like duck. Not everybody likes duck. Right. You, you have to balance it. And if you're having meat, maybe have a fish with it. Don't have maybe two meats. If you're having a, a warm starter... Try and have a cold starter opposite. Try and, you know, so you could have balance a, So you could have a volavant and melon. Volavant or a salad. Or, or a salad. Yeah, yeah you know, like that, something yeah. like that. Just to balance it. Um, same with the desserts. If you're having the dessert, the most popular dessert we have is the, the symphony dessert, which is the three small tasters. Right. Um, have that, but don't have it all, don't have it all cake. Don't have it all chocolate. Right. Have a bit of fruit in it. Do you know, just it's, it's to balance it. Okay. Otherwise, you know, on its own, it's probably nice. You have to remember you're after having four courses before that. Right, okay. And the balance uh, of. In relation to the four courses then, you'd often see brides um, and, and grooms, I presume. I don't get to the groom's house that often. But you'd often see in brides' house that they're, they're, they're reluctant to eat that morning. And, uh, and you know, you get to the, the wedding then mm. and they're mm. famished. But you, I presume you would recommend everybody eats the morning of a wedding. Oh, yeah. Oh, you'd have to eat. You have to eat. You have to eat. Although I've noticed the, the arrival receptions at weddings are huge now. It's gone. It's it's. In what way? That's big business. It's the the, the 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 offering that you you offer people on arrival. You have to remember your guests could be travelling from eight nine in the morning. Yes. They might have breakfast. All right. They might have had at eight o'clock in the morning. They're arriving at the hotel half past three. They might be getting dinner till six o'clock. Yes. That's a long day. It's so they've skipped lunch. They've skipped lunch so because they've been at the mass. You have to feed your guests. You have, you you're you're basically lunch. feeding them twice. And, what, and, and, and in the evening time then as well. Exactly. So the, the arrival reception is important. You know, you don't want to fill them too much that they're not able to eat their dinner, but you do yeah. need to give them something... Just to tie them over, I presume. Some more more than a biscuit. Come out, come out, yeah. Right, OK. Something, okay. something um, more than a cookie. In just, it, just let's talk about the evening part of the, the menu. Is, do, do, you, do you look after that as well as that part of your... Oh, yeah, yeah. So can they have anything they want... Part of, you know, normally you'd, you'd, you'd have sandwiches and cocktail sausages. Sandwiches, cocktail sausages, goujons, uh, skewers, the Which normal, spring rolls. spring rolls, right, okay. chips, so, the normal fare, you know. Right, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, I saw, at, I, I can't remember what, what hotel it was, but they were giving out um, mini burgers. Yeah. They were popular mm. and the basket of chips. The or cone, something. you get them in the cone. You get them in yeah. the cone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and pizzas, yeah, mini pizzas. Yeah. I've seen them done. Yeah. So people can basically have whatever they want within, yeah, within, within reason. reason yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. Um, I don't think this question we I mentioned it earlier on, um, but I, I, the server to guest ratio is that something that you get involved in? As 
don't really get involved as, in, as much in that. It's, it's, a, it's, a, that's front, that's it's a front of house issue. Right, <laughs> once I have enough chefs to cook it, I'm once happy enough. enough chef um, it cooks. depends. A lot of our weddings will be silver service, which very few people places are doing. Like we do it by the flat. Yes. You know, whereas we no, we plate the fish because it's too delicate. Very few weddings do that. Very few. Very few. Well, no, we can do both. Yes. But that's that's how we do it. Why? Why? Why is there? Is it quicker to do it the other way? Is it? It's quicker. It is quicker. You're getting ten joints out at one time, whereas right. if you're plating, depends. It, again, depends on your staffing levels. Right. Okay. Um, it works best. The for us staff there. in the Sligo Park have been with has most of them. There's, there's a lot of senior staff up there, isn't there? They've been there a long time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and 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 in relation to the Clayton as well, you've got staff that have been there since the very beginning as well, yeah, nine, ten years. Isn't almost there? is uh, all staff here. You know, and we serve uh, food on the plates, different like in the mm. Mark Hotel. Okay, and I think it's quicker to serve like that. Yeah. It's quick. It's quicker to get it out. So, so, you, so you, 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 you have the meat on the plate. Everything on the plate and everything on the plate. Then and then you've got people going around if they want seconds or if they want. Usually, it's one person staff per table and right. they serve food very quick. Okay, okay, okay. Um, let me ask you this: At what point in the process do people finalize what they want on their menu? How far out is it? Six months, three months, uh, two months, two weeks? Depends on depends how organized the couple are, really. Yeah. Um, I had three days notice, it's loads. Three days notice, mm. but you prefer... Oh, I'd prefer two weeks, three weeks. Two weeks, yeah. three weeks, okay, let's... Yeah, you usually one thing? week. Is yes, a week is well, a week, right. week could be plenty. But people, people pick their menus people, well in advance, people, for the most part, I think, wouldn't they? Most weddings are like military now, they have everything yeah. organised. But, but that's down to the wedding coordinators yeah. as well, really, yeah. isn't it? I mean, they're, they're, they're so clued in yeah. to they're, the whole... They're hands-on, they're, they're with them on the whole journey off the wedding, yeah. from when they book it, right the way through, I know Margaret's up in the hotel, she's very good at it, she's always in contact and she's always telling me that a couple are coming in. I don't know how they do it actually, I mean, yeah. they're juggling 5, 10, 12, 15 couples yeah. every month or yeah. you know, every second month, it's, mm. I don't know how they do yeah. it. What about, what about changes on the, on the menu, again, when, when, when do you prefer to, to, to know about changes and stuff like that? How do you mean if they do it? If, if, if let's say, they, 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 they've asked for it and it's been organised, um, they want beef and salmon. At what, I mean, three days out, can they change it to beef and chicken? Yeah, we can. Yeah. So that's the thing when you're cooking it on the day. It's not, you're, nothing's pre-cooked. No yes. Is, so you're not wasting anything. Right, and okay. chances are you don't even have it in stock at that stage anyway. So. What, do you, what do you say to the fellas that are um, doing the speeches and the, the can't eat and... Uh, is there anything, any words of wisdom that you can advise them on or, or offer them? I don't know. I didn't do many speeches before. <laughs> um, I don't know. Just remember you're among friends. Yeah. So everybody in the room knows you, so yeah. just pretend you're talking to them at the bar. Exactly. That's <laughs> it, exactly. As it was as well. That's, that's it, exactly. Um, do, I just want a quick question again in relation to uh, the menus. Let's say somebody wanted a French theme menu. Can you guys look after that, or do you have to? Do they have to bring somebody in, or or um, an Asian flair, or an Indian flair? Let's say it's you know it's a mixed wedding, or it's a you know I, I did a Syrian wedding in a hotel last year, I think it was. Right. So their food was totally different. Mm. Is that something you can cater for, or do you bring in a specialist? It's no problem. You can make any menu, and you have experience Asian food, Indian food. No problem. No problem. It's, it's, it's rare we've ever been asked to do it, but we've, we've dealt with numbers. Like we've done, I think only last month we had, uh, or this month actually, we had the, that football team, FC Michigan. We were, they were playing Derry City in the showgrounds in the UEFA Cup. Right. And we had them for three days, and their menu was totally, completely different to what we'd be serving normally. In what way? Uh, they, had different, they had different nutritional needs, they had different... No different dishes on because different they were athletes. Athletes, and they wanted certain things from the, like they wanted a lot of veal there. Say, no, we wouldn't really serve much veal in hotel. Yeah, yeah. That's what they wanted, so that's what they got. Really? You know? Yeah, they they, they, they send on their their requirements maybe two weeks in advance. Very very yeah. fancy. Yeah. Talk to me about um, the children's menu. Then is there do you provide a children's menu or is it just standard? Or no, there's a separate children's menu. What what does that involve? What what are what are the, what are their choices? What can they have? 
Well, on like on the day, it's it's, it's it'll be like catering for people who die. If mommy and daddy knows what little Johnny's going to eat, yeah. If they say he wants a half portion of whatever joint is, that's what they can have. Right. But then they have their spaghetti bolognese, you know, their normal, their pastas, their goujons, right? You know, yeah. but yeah. it's like that. The parents know better, as I explained to the couples. Parents know better what the kids want to eat than what we know. And I see a lot of the time at weddings, um, the, the kids, the children get fed. You know, the, 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 you know, the soup course could be being served, but the kids get their main course. Is that is that deliberate, or is it just to keep them quiet? Uh, they can get half portion of the main course, but they have to pay, I think, three euros supplement. Right. Okay. Okay. But if if they just want chicken, if they want chicken nuggets and chips or something, that's you know you can serve them as the soup comes out and they can get it. again we're probably gated by the parents on that one. Right. The, the norm the server might come in and say I need the two sausage and chips for table nine. The parents say can have it now. They might even have had soup. No kids right. don't normally sit down and eat okay. two and three okay. courses. They just want okay. they want their sausage and chips and their jelly. The Christmas time is it does it make any difference? Christmas. The winter weddings, in relation to the kitchen, not, not really. It's a just on desserts we can put the Christmas pudding. Yeah. The custard, yeah. And, and right, okay, and and people I suppose arriving then does the you have the mold wine. The mold wines and Is then, then you have the, the mince years? pies and mince pies that's part and of the that's part of the package at Christmas. Right. Okay. As you know, there's a mold wine reception. You no, know, the drinks reception will be yeah. mold wine, and yeah, yeah. the afters be mince pies. And yeah. let me ask you this question then: When when you're preparing for a wedding and you're looking at, are you looking after the wedding as well as the restaurant, or have you different chefs looking after the restaurant while you're looking after the wedding? Depending on the day. Depends on the day. Depending on the day. Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. In what way? Well. Nine times out of ten, the wedding would be being served just before the restaurant really opens. Okay. And we'd have a bit of a separate ki bar kitchen then just for the bar food, so it doesn't. Yes, really, I've seen it, that. It doesn't really clash. Yeah, and and the, the same yeah. the Clayton, don't. Yes, we have uh, in the Clayton Hotel three kitchens: kitchen bar, restaurant uh, kitchen, and the function kitchen. Right. It's no oh. problem. <laughs> uh, usually, <laughs> see that go. <laughs> usually working for the function prep, two chefs. Right. Okay. And it's plenty of time. Everything in the same day. Let me ask you this question, um, and, and this is probably um, or I was on the internet earlier, and I came across this question. I don't think it happens here as often as it does maybe across the pond. Um, do people or can people arrange to have leftovers for the next day? Can they t be taken home, or can they be donated to um, a charity, or do you only cook what's necessary? I suspect that's the answer. Ideally, there'd be no waste. Right. Uh, I wouldn't be keen on handing out any leftovers really? to anybody. I'd love a side of beef now, you know, at yeah. two <laughs> o'clock in the morning, I'm DJing or, yeah. or, you know. <laughs> in a, in a I keep one, I keep a wee bit. <laughs> um, no, it, wouldn't, it never really comes up, to be honest. No, yeah, no that's what yeah. I'm saying. It, 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 I, I suspect it's yeah. more of an American yeah. type of... Uh, it, would ha it would happen more at a, a buffet kind of wedding more right. than a, a sit-down meal. Yeah, but uh, now that you mentioned it, the buffet wedding, main or sit-down wedding, is there a different prep? Is there what, is there a different setup? Do you approach it differently? The prep, I think, is the same, but it's, I think it's less expensive buffet wedding. And right. It's very popular. Mm -hmm. Very popular. It's very popular for... for for a small wedding, I mean, it, it can work very successfully mm. for a large wedding as well. It's, it's what are the advantages over a buffet? Not never mind price, but is, is it's there? It's just less informal. I think it's just less. Have, do people have more of a choice at a buffet wedding? Do you think, or can they have? They have more choice in the lines that they're not just getting meat and two veg for their mains. You know, they'd have, they'd have they'd obviously have two or three different mains, and then you have different salads. You have five or six different types of salads. You know that type of way and. As I said, it's less informal, but don't really do a lot of buffet weddings. Do buffets right. maybe the next day, you know, for the bridal party. Okay. And okay. Stuff like that, but. Okay. Um, can, I, I, we might have covered this already. Um, can the couples, if they are looking for a favourite dish or a cultural dish, do you cater for that? Or do you, rec if Auntie Mary wants to cook a curry or 
something special for granddad you know do you allow them bring in something for granddad or if it keeps granddad happy if it keeps granddad happy <laughs> that's what I thought excellent stuff excellent, excellent stuff um, alright then I, unless I mean, let, me, let, let me just ask you this when you're when you're talking to couples and in relation to the menu itself what's what would be you know your top three tips to the couples what do you what do you recommend them i mean we mo- we spoke earlier about the timing timing mm. is important yeah that they don't that when they set the time with the hotel coordinator or the wedding coordinator who liaises with you guys that's you know that that's pretty much set in stone mm. unless there's a some sort of emergency, I would assume. Yeah. Try and stick to it as try and stick to it as physically as, as, as best possible. as possible. Yeah, yeah. It's it's for their own benefit. Yeah. And their guests. Yeah. You know, I want to serve them the food at the best possible quality it can be. And yeah. the longer it's you know, the longer it sits, it's losing that bit every every ten, twenty minutes it loses okay. that small bit, you know. Okay. So, anything else, Sebastian? Uh, I mean when you're talking to couples, what what would you recommend and uh, I recommend always the food that is always fresh uh, from the fresh ingredients and never frozen and we have uh, best suppliers in Ireland and does the cost of a wedding change in relation to anything to uh, to Items being available are they like seasonal items, whether it be like like spring lamb or, or you know mm-hmm. stuff like that. It does that come into it a lot? Is that a factor? It's a factor in in certain items. Like beef fillet now is a lot dearer than beef sirloin, right? So that's a factor. That's not the hundred degree seasonality or anything. Yes. It's just it's just a fact. Right. It's it's more expensive. Yeah. So that would make. That's why the, the menu packages are designed in such a way. Oh, right, they, so you have the, menu packages. That they're tiered in such a way. Right, okay. So, like, there'll be a, the, the, the package that'll be the least expensive. And then it builds so you, up and so, builds up and builds up. So you have crisp sandwiches is your basic package. <laughs> no, we're not that basic. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got a couple of different packages. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, what about? Um, I, I see at some weddings you get the, the, the what's it called? The sorbet? The sorbet course, yeah. The sorbet yeah. course, yeah. Is, is that popular? Is it? It can be. Or is it very fancy? Yeah, it can be. Is it fancy? Uh, it's it's fancy. Is it a bit fancy? I don't know. Yeah, I like sorbet. Yeah. It's nice, yeah. What's, it's the, idea, what's, what's nice. the idea of the sorbet? It just cleanses. It's, it's to cleanse the palate, just to. Cleanse, for yeah. getting ready for the main event. Getting ready for the, the main event. Right. That's the plan of it. <laughs> Some people, people, some people think, think, think they're getting their ice cream before the. No, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Take that back. Remember, man, you get a few old fellas in the corner, and, and you know. Um, but the, the the meal is 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 like, it's it's very important on a mm. wedding day. It is very important. Isn't it? That's what I, I stress to the couples when I meet them at the wedding tastings and different events. Try and put them at ease. They've enough to be worrying about on a wedding day. She yeah. has to worry about the dress, the makeup, the hair. He has to worry about Turn getting up. there on time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they shouldn't have to worry about the meal. That's right. that's my philosophy to a wedding. Just that's your job. That's my job. I'd be worrying the whole day about it until it's done. Yeah. There's no one person worrying about stuff. They right. don't have to worry about it. Right, right, right. That's that's my philosophy on weddings. What about you, Sebastian, over there? Have you any philosophy on weddings? The, the food is most important on the wedding and if we be food done well, every, every, everyone will be very What's happy. Your mic has got be if the food is done well, people will remember. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it's normally done well. It's well, always done well, I have to say, in the Sligo Park and in the Clayton Hotel. Always. Is always, nice. always. Thank you. <laughs> always. I've always found it to be excellent. What about you, Richard? Brilliant. Both perfect. Absolutely oh, perfect. Right. All right, then. That's, that's okay. Richard, I think we're going to leave it there for the moment. Um, thanks very much. Um, unless the lads have anything else, have you? Is there anything you haven't that we haven't covered? or? No, um, no, just... 
if, if couples are interested, who, who do they talk to in the... Margaret Finnegan is the dedicated wedding coordinator She's in the, the hotel. dedicated wedding coordinator. Yeah, in um, and just keep an eye out for, we have wedding open days. We had one about three weeks ago. We normally have them, probably have one now again at the end of the summer. Okay. It's nice to come up. We we'll see the setup, the it, arrivals is, and the room and... Is it a good, is it, you recently got the place re renovated. Totally re renovated, yeah. The, the lobby, the bar, a uh, lot of the rooms done, new bridal suite. I can't wait to see. I'm really looking um, forward to seeing Yeah, it. you should come up. It, it, it really has transformed. It's Excellent. totally transformed. What about you, Sebastian? Have you anything else to add over there? And of course, you, you recently took over the hotel as part of the, the Clayton Group. How long is it, Clayton? It's a year and a bit now, isn't it? Two years. Is it two years now? Nearly two years. Nearly two years. There's that microphone again. All right, Richard. That's where we're going to leave it, I think. I want to say thank you very much to my two guests, to Chris Friel from the Saga Park Hotel and Sebastian Shulzinski. Shulzinski. It's not Shulzinski. That's right. <laughs> Shul, Shulzinski. It's a great name from the Clayton Hotel in Sligo. Thank you very much both for joining us. Thank you. Thanks to Richard for uh, looking after everything on production. And thanks to all of you for joining us. I don't know which camera, which camera am I looking at? That one. That's why <laughs> there's cameras everywhere. Uh, thanks to all of you for joining us. And uh, hopefully we'll see you all again next week.